Hello Gut Squad and welcome back to my channel. This is Cecily and Freya. As always, today we are so excited to be back with you guys filming. It's been so long, almost a year since I filmed last and I couldn't be more excited. So essentially, if you guys are new here, uh, hi, I'm Cecily <laughs> and this is Freya. Valkyrie is sulking over there in the corner. But um, basically today is going to be a chit chatty get ready with me. I'm gonna be changing my ostomy bag today and also do some life updates that I feel are very necessary since I have been gone for so long. Freya is quickly losing patience with me because this is take like 10. So I'm gonna let her down. I'm so excited to see you guys. Uh, 500 subscribers. <laughs> what? So thank you all so much for joining and being a part of the Gut Squad community. I am floored and I couldn't be more excited to have you all on board. I am really, really, really proud of all of you guys and your comments have lifted my spirits on some really dark days this year. And I just hope you know how important you all are to me. We are going to be doing a bag change. It was a blissful, wonderful morning. The birds were chirping, the sun was rising. It looked gorgeous outside and I was in my bathroom because I had a blowout this morning. So <laughs> if you're an ostomate, you know that blowouts are kind of an inevitability. They will happen and it sucks because every time you feel like, what could I have done differently? Why did this happen? Mine personally happened from a retraction that was pretty intense and it's never easy. Every time I blow out, I always have this sense of like, defeat. <laughs> but I figured I would channel those feelings of frustration into a video for you all today because I know we all struggle with this problem and I actually made it out pretty lucky because I have been through this before and I use the Active Lifestyles Sure Seal rings. Not sponsored, but they are amazing. <laughs> I love these rings. So essentially they're Tegaderm and what happens is when you blow out, sorry I'm covered in cat hair, when you blow out, um, typically the wafer will come off of your skin and allow a bunch of stool to leak out. When that happens, if you don't have a really secure waterproof barrier between you and the outside world, you'll leak on whatever it is that you're sleeping on, sitting on, wearing, etc. If you have the foresight to wear a Tegaderm barrier, you'll have less of a chance of that leak getting further than just the barrier itself because the Tegaderm is so strong, it just clings to you. I definitely feel as though it's a worthwhile investment. I personally get my Sure Seal rings through insurance, which makes it so easy to actually order them. I don't have to pay extra when they come. There are these little floppy things and you cut them um, any way you want and they're just very convenient and they fit a lot of different ostomy, wafers, types, sizes. So if you guys are looking for some extra leak protection, I know I've gotten a lot of questions about that recently. This is my number one tip. I think we've talked enough, so let's actually get into the bag changing portion of this video. I'm gonna lower you guys down and zoom you in. All right, you're all zoomed in and hopefully you guys are able to see my ostomy area pretty clearly. So I'm gonna start with some of my adhesive remover wipes by Sensicare. They are amazing. Um, I think it's technically by Convitec, but Sensicare is just the line. I have a little waste paper basket right there. So I'm not just tossing these on the floor because my cats will eat them. This year, wow guys, it's been, it's been a minute. After the winter break, I went into organic chemistry and some other really challenging classes. Um, I'm still an undergraduate, so, you know, none of them are crazy, but I just felt like I didn't have the energy and the time and the focus to balance everything at once. And YouTube, unfortunately, is sort of my pastime. So I had to cut back a lot on those pastime type activities. World of Warcraft, out the window. Fortnite, out the window. You know, just these, these things I used to do to sort of unwind and relax, had to go on the back burner and all of my free time was kind of spent recovering physically. So I, I didn't have, as some people might say, enough spoons to do everything in a day. I'm just just again, removing uh, all the adhesives, all the gunk, all the stool from underneath of my stomach area right now. You guys can see that, yeah. Very red today, don't mind that. My stomach has actually been pretty good, like not too much peristomal irritation. I know it looks that way. I just get really, really red whenever I rub myself with, with these things. So 
don't you worry i'm doing just fine organic chemistry ends right and i'm like woo woo <laughs> you know it's so happy about that because that was my last that was organic chemistry too so i'm done i did love the class though and then i went straight into a summer term with um a class called uh, human physiology i was kind of thrown from the you know boiling water into the frying pan is that a saying basically had to step up my game a lot for that summer class because summer classes if you guys don't know move fast so i was kind of focusing on the summer class for the first part of the summer and then when july rolled around and that class was over i was like heck yeah i'm gonna film and then i started feeling really cruddy I felt really just lethargic, fatigued, and not the usual amount, like just really sick. I also had this pain in my upper left side that just would not get away, would not go away. I talked to my doctors about it and they all kind of agreed like, oh, it sounds like an ulcer. You know, you're having this nausea, you're having all this discomfort, it's probably an ulcer. So we were sort of trying to schedule something and even though it's sort of a post-COVID world, things are still running a little slowly, especially with my GI practice. It was hard to get an appointment in a reasonable amount of time. And I felt, I felt down. I felt really kind of depressive for a minute there because I was, I was very ill and I didn't really know why. Um, I've had ulcers before and I've never had the kind of crippling fatigue I had with this one. Last week, I ended up going into the hospital because I had what they assume was an internal bleed. The issue was that they didn't actually find an ulcer. Now again, I'm just, I'm just cleaning the area, the peristomal area, which is the area directly surrounding the stoma with an adhesive remover, alcohol-free wipe because if I have anything to impart to you guys today, it is do not rub alcohol around your peristomal area from experience. It can get pretty stabby at that point. This pain was not going away. The fatigue and nausea were getting worse. I was pale as a ghost, apparently. I'm kind of always pale, but I was extremely pale then. And that's kind of how I ended up being admitted. They did not find an ulcer. They did a uh, just a yield endoscopy, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with. You put a camera down the throat and you basically look in the stomach and do a denim. Didn't find anything there. And they also did a capsule endoscopy, which is which is when they make you swallow this really interesting pill that blinks and it has a camera and it kind of surveils your entire gut. It does all of your bowel, essentially. Nothing actually came of that study either. So we were all really confused and we're still confused. They did discharge me when the bleeding stopped and my hematocrit levels returned to normal, but I was really scared for a minute there because, and I still am, because I don't know where the bleed came from and it could be anything at this point. It was a humbling experience and I haven't been in the hospital in a really long time. So it was difficult to be back there, but I'm happy I'm home. I'm so relieved that it's nothing serious enough that I'd have to be there for a long time and uh, I was only there for about five days in total so it wasn't too too bad I'm just glad to no longer be NPO because <laughs> when I tell you guys that I hate being NPO I really hate being NPO because my Dr. Pepper needs to be a part of my life and um, I couldn't have any Dr. Pepper so I was really bummed out the whole time. Anyway, <laughs> we're gonna get back into the bag part. So this is my wafer. Now, you might be saying, Cecily, I thought you swore by one-piece bags. Yes, I used to. Now I'm kind of in a two-piece bag mode. I don't know why this has been happening, but essentially in all of my coloplast bags, this little spout has been leaking like crazy. I don't know if it's a manufacturing issue. I don't really know what's going on, but I'm, I'm just sick of it. So I, I've decided that um, instead of switching from Coloplast because I still love their products and they're still the best brand I've ever encountered, I, I'm just gonna use a two-piece system because the two-piece systems have the advantage of being able to change the bag. So if that leakage issue comes around and I can't, I can't clean it well enough, I can't dry it off, I can't like, 
no matter what I do, it's still leaking. I can just change the bag without having to change the wafer. And since I have sensitive peristomal skin, minimizing wafer changing is a priority for me. So even though I find these bags a little bit bulkier, a little bit less comfortable, a little bit more ostentatious, if you will, only by like a fraction, mind you. But still, I, I have a slight preference toward the single piece bags. These are just what I'm, I'm driving with at the moment. That is something I wanted to point out. If you guys are also struggling with this cold class spout leakage issue, please let me know. I have had such trouble with it. I'm gonna now cut my wafer. So if you guys are new to being an ostomate or if you wanted to know, basically these wafers come pre-measured and they have all these lines demarcating their circumference. So basically I'm gonna be cutting mine around the 20 mark here. That's my normal stoma size. And if you've had your stoma for a while, you can kind of assume that your stoma is gonna stay around the same size. If my stoma is significantly smaller or larger than usual, I'll use this stoma guide here that I get with all of my coloplast supplies, which basically just gives you uh, different measurements of the stoma and allows you to say, okay, my stoma is 20 millimeters, which is about what mine is. Mine's about this whole. So it allows you that extra level of control and comfort when you're changing your bags so that you know exactly what your stoma size is because it can be hard to cut this hole appropriately without it. If you do not fit your hole, Directly to your stoma, I find that that washback problem gets a lot worse. Like you'll get more um, stool flowing back through the wafer into your peristomal area, causing this leakage that is so very problematic. Oh, look, there we go. Yeah, see, I ate marshmallows before I started filming and now look what that's gotten me. Absolutely nothing. Hopefully we won't have any more leaks while I'm talking. Yeah, no, it pretty much keeps outputting the whole time. So sorry about that, guys. I had a lot of apprehension going back in with such challenging classes. I felt really, really fortunate to be able to return and not have volvulus or not have an ileus or something really bad happening. My stoma stayed really healthy the whole time. I just can't even tell you how much that meant to me. It, it kind of felt like I have finally gotten control back over something in my life like school, which I value so much. You guys are always like, Cecily, how do you get your ostomy to stop outputting when you're changing? Clearly we haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> I did some um, marshmallows this morning, but they're they're pretty much wearing off because it's this is like take 25. So I'm hoping that the stoma actually behaves. Let's put all of our barrier stuff on. So I'm gonna use my moisture absorbing powder. I'm gonna put that around the base of the stoma. Of course, it's getting all over my pants as well, which is the usual deal. But next, I'm gonna go in with my Cavalon, and this is just a skin prep agent. There are many different brands. Cavalon is just my favorite. And basically, what I'm gonna be doing here is I'm just making a little cake. Like, I'm kind of making it into a paste on the stoma and we are outputting and it's annoying and please stop that. Okay, so now that I've caked everything on, I'm gonna actually brush off all this gunk from my shorts, which are black. Why I didn't wear white shorts? Probably because I didn't wanna get output all over, <laughs> let's be honest. The key here is that you want to get it really dry, and I am currently struggling with that. If you are also like me and you're, you know, it's a struggle for you to be an ostomate and have the food restrictions, the activity restrictions, the hydration considerations, all the stuff that comes with being an ostomate, you're not alone. I've had my ostomy, I've had multiple ostomies over the course of about oh, almost three years now, and it's it's not easy. <laughs> like it, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that it's it's easy to lead this lifestyle or have you know limitations that you might not be okay with. You know, you might not have really signed up for. But it is a reality of having of having this type of illness, and I couldn't be more grateful for it. Honestly, every time the ostomy slows me down and I feel a little I feel a little frustrated, I just remind myself. Remember how it used to be? Remember how the bathroom limited you? Remember how going to the bathroom made you feel powerless and isolated and afraid? Now, I, when I go to the bathroom, I feel like, yeah, I just have to empty my bag. I'm not gonna be in there for two hours. <laughs> I'm gonna be in there for about five minutes, if that. And it's not gonna hurt and I'm gonna be fine. And that to me is worth its 
it's worth anything. It's a priceless gift to have this stoma. So I'm not sitting here telling you that, that it's easy, but again, it will become more and more worth it the longer you live with one. I think that's where people maybe have a misconception that like being an ostomy becomes easier over time. It does, but it doesn't come easier because the stoma necessarily always clearly doesn't always behave. You know, it, it's it's a stoma. It, it's going to be frustrating to live with, but it definitely gives you a level of security that you might have lost before. But Trevor has been, guys, Trevor has been amazing. <laughs> I mean, he, he visited me every day when I was just in the hospital. He's been so cool about the ostomy, which has been playing its tricks lately. Like this morning when it blew out, he was like, are you okay? <laughs> that was his first question. It wasn't, is there poop all over the bed? <laughs> so the fact that that was his first question, just, oof, you guys, he's the cutest. He's been going through his own stuff. Like, you know, he's had to adjust to working remotely and he's had to adjust to, you know, being here when his, when his family and friends are down south. And it just, you know, I think it's hard for him to have these quarantines and not be able to visit anyone. So, and unlike me, because with me, I like, barely see anyone and if I do then they come to me because they're my parents <laughs> so um and my parents and and Trevor and I are all vaccinated at this point so we have seen each other since quarantine and that was really cool we actually went to Rhode Island which was so fun I'll throw up some pictures here you know other than that though we've been pretty much hunkered down and I'm sure you guys have probably been doing the same because a lot of you are are most likely in the immunocompromised bucket with me but I just feel like coronavirus is finally getting better. You know, things are just getting better. Everyone's vaccinated. I'm excited for things to kind of get back to normal. A little nervous, but I'm, I'm excited. And I feel like it's gonna be even more rewarding to step back on campus for the first time in the fall than usual, because it will, it will have been over, you know, a year since any normalcy. So I, I hope you guys are all also looking forward to post-pandemic life um, and I hope it will truly be post-pandemic life and not pandemic light because <laughs> that's kind of what it is in New York right now and um, I'm just a little frustrated with it. Here we go. This is my wafer. It has my multiple ring already on it and I've tried to get this. Oh my God, I swear to Jesus. Guys, Please save me. I don't, I don't know what I did wrong this morning. I did the marshmallow trick. What do you want from me? So yeah, I was released from the hospital on Thursday and I'm feeling very happy to be home. Like it was, it was a rough one. I had amazing hospital staff though. Like my doctor was incredible. All of them were actually. Um, the nurses were amazing. Like, you know, I've, I've come on here and I've told you guys a lot of my gripes with the hospital system. But this, this go around at the hospital was refreshingly effective, you know, and, and the people there were very sweet. So I have no complaints for this time around. I was very lucky. I got some incredible nurses, especially. Okay, we're gonna go in quick with this wafer. I don't have much time. Okay, so you stick it right around the stoma and then press nice and gentle. Yeah, you don't want to press too hard because I just feel like that puts unnecessary stress on the ostomy. But just, you know, pat it down. Make sure it's really, you've got the edges down. I struggle because my scar is right here, as you guys can see. So it tends to get really bumpy here and it makes it quite challenging to get a seal on it. So just make sure you're like massaging that area in, getting it nice and pat down. Another great tip is to use a hair dryer actually to kind of help the seal bind to the skin. Because if you have a hair dryer, that heat helps with the adhesion a lot in my experience. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about pancake prevention. Um, as much as I love pancakes, this is not the kind of pancake you wanna eat. So I'm gonna use some lubricating deodorant from Coloplast. I'm gonna go in with that. And now I have my two piece system bag here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin off this cap and I'm going to put just a little bit of this lubricating deodorant inside of the bag. 
and my ostomy is currently outputting. Don't look at that. That lubricating deodorant is very helpful because it basically gives the uh, output a place to slide down and it makes it a lot less likely to stick up against the roof of your ostomy. So the lubricating deodorant is a really good way to go. I've read some comments that have said baby oil works very well also. So if you don't have any lubricating deodorant on hand, baby oil is great. Um, and it's probably really safe and benign as well. So it's a good way to go. So now I've cut my Active Lifestyle Sure Seal rings in half. And the reason I do that is because it makes it just a little bit easier to actually apply because you only have to worry about one side at a time. I'm gonna put one strip on this side and we're still out putting, are you kidding me? <laughs> I swear to God, all right. So before we output any more, I'm gonna put this bag on finally. So you just clamp it in to its slot on the wafer and just give it a nice little go around, make sure it's really all clamped down because if it's not, you will leak. And there's nothing these sure seal rings can do to help you at that point. So then you have on Coloplast at least these little clasps, you're gonna click that shut. Let's listen for the click. There it is. So there's the click. I know now that it's secure. And then I'm gonna start pulling off these sure seal rings paper side so that we have just the adhesive side down. The adhesive side is down. It has now stuck to the skin. It is all good in the neighborhood. I believe we have my craggy little scar covered here, which is fantastic. And yeah, okay guys, so we have successfully completed a bag change. Yeah, in any case, I feel like this video has been kind of all over the place and I do apologize for that. But mostly I've just missed you guys and I'm gonna try to sprinkle in some more life updates as I get back into a regular filming schedule. But this was just sort of a first pass at a video since I've been gone. I hope you guys enjoyed. I really enjoy spending time filming with you guys. Again, this year has been really rough and when I'm not in a mental space that I feel appropriate for filming, like I, I feel like I'm a little more down than usual or I, you know, I'm just not with it or my anxiety's up, which it has been a lot. Um, it, it just behooves me to stay offline because I feel like my channel is a place for positivity and forward thinking and not dwelling on the past and really trying to conquer life with an ostomy and with a chronic illness and with an invisible illness as many of us do have. And so when I'm feeling down, I prefer to, you know, work on my mental health on my own and really come back to you guys with the positive attitude that I prefer to have and I know I'm capable of having. In any case, thank you guys so much for sticking with me through this chaotic video. I appreciate it so much. I've missed you all. Again, more content to come. Follow me on Instagram at the underscore gut underscore squad. If you wanna keep up with me, I post just a bit more frequently there, but not enough. <laughs> so I'm gonna be trying to post there more as well. Please stay safe out there, gut squad. Stay hydrated. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, gut squad.